this tricky topic, we're going to look at psychological disorders. We're going to focus on personality disorders and mood disorders. We'll look at how they're different and what each entail. First, we have to understand the fundamental differences between personality disorders and mood disorders. A personality disorder is a maladaptive and inflexible pattern of cognition, emotion, and behavior within an individual. Another way to put this is that a personality disorder is a fundamental difference in how a person experiences or deals with emotion, how they interact with others, and how they think about problems or interpret situations. It's important to note that personality disorders generally develop in late childhood and adolescence and continue into adulthood as they're often permanent in nature. In contrast to personality disorders, mood disorders are a category of psychological disorders characterized by severe disturbances in emotional behavior. And remember that in order for someone to be diagnosed with a disorder, their feelings or patterns of behavior must either be causing significant distress in the affected individual or be significantly negatively affecting their day-to-day -day functioning. First, we'll look at personality disorders, of which there are three distinct clusters, those being odd eccentric, dramatic emotional, and anxious fearful. The first cluster is odd eccentric, of which there are three subtypes. The first is schizoid personality disorder, and this is someone who does not want close relationships, is emotionally aloof, reclusive, and often humorless. This is an individual who really wants to live a solitary life. The second subtype is schizotypal, which is someone who's really isolated and asocial and has odd thoughts and beliefs. For example, this individual might look at stories on TV and in the news and believe that these stories are about them even though they have no relation at all to the stories being told. And the third subtype is paranoid personality disorder. And this is someone who's extremely suspicious and mistrustful of people in both ways that are unwarranted and not adaptive. An example here would be someone who holds unwarranted grudges for an unusually long period of time. The second cluster of personality disorders are dramatic emotional, of which there are four subtypes. The first is histrionic personality disorder, and this is someone who wants to be the center of attention at all times and will achieve this either through dramatic, seductive, flamboyant, or extremely exaggerated behaviors directed toward others. The second subtype is borderline personality disorder, and this is an individual with out-of-control emotions as well as having an extreme fear of being abandoned by others. By doing this, these people will often oscillate between idolizing and despising people who they're close with. And the third subtype is narcissistic personality disorder, and this describes an individual who has extremely positive self-image, is extremely arrogant, and has exaggerated self-centered thoughts and ideas. The fourth and final type is antisocial personality disorder, and this is someone who's extremely impulsive, deceptive, often violent and ruthless and callous in their behavior. This is a very serious and potentially dangerous disorder. However, it's really important not to confuse antisocial personality disorder with someone who is asocial, where being asocial just means someone who is shy and does not necessarily enjoy themselves in social situations. The third and final cluster of personality disorders is anxious fearful, of which there are three subtypes. However, in general, this third cluster is described by someone who has a persistently high level of anxiety and nervousness, as well as fear in many different situations. The first subtype is avoidant personality disorders, and this is someone who is so afraid of being criticized that they will avoid interacting with others altogether and become completely socially isolated. The second is dependent personality disorder, and this is someone who has a great fear of being rejected, resulting in the development of extremely clingy and dependent relationships with others, such that they only feel safe when in these relationships. And the third is obsessive compulsive personality disorder, which is someone who is very rigid in their habits and they tend to be extreme perfectionists. This is similar to but much more general than OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. Here we're looking at obsessive compulsive personality disorder, which is different, where obsessive compulsive disorder is a clinical disorder and it's much more specific to certain actions like cleaning or tapping a certain amount of times. On the other hand, obsessive compulsive personality disorder is much more general to all aspects of one's life.
Now we'll look at mood disorders, and mood disorders are a category of psychological disorders characterized by severe disturbances in one's emotional behavior. These disturbances in emotional behavior are so severe that they prevent people from functioning normally. We're going to look at two common mood disorders, those being depression and bipolar disorder. First, looking at depression, it's important to note that it manifests differently in different people, but in general, it can be categorized as any combination of intense sadness and anxiety and extreme apathy and discontent. So the first type we're going to look at is major depressive disorder, and this is a mood disorder characterized by pervasively low mood, lack of motivation, low energy, and feelings of worthlessness and guilt that last for at least two consecutive weeks. This is also often associated Associated with sleep disturbances, such that people will suffer either from insomnia, a lack of sleep, or hypersomnia, which is an excess of sleep. More than often, it reoccurs in someone's life, and it's very important to highlight that this is more than just the blues. When we look at major depressive disorder, we're talking about a life-altering change in one's behavior accompanied by a deep apathy and withdrawal from one's life. This can be a major risk factor for suicide. Dysthymia, on the other hand, is a form of depression that's milder in intensity than major depressive disorder. The symptoms are the same, however, they're less intense. And in fact, clinical depression occurs in about 12% of Canadian adults at some point in their lives, so it's quite pervasive. When looking at the causes of depression, it's important to understand that there are both external and internal factors that increase the likelihood of experiencing a depressive episode. There was a study done in 2003 by Caspi and colleagues that illustrates these points. To briefly explain this experiment, they measured both the number of stressful life events that participants experienced, representing extrinsic or external factors, and a person's genetic propensity for depression, representing intrinsic or internal factors. The experiment showed that it was an interaction between both extrinsic stressful life events and intrinsic genetics that determines one's probability of experiencing depression. The second type of mood disorder that we'll discuss is bipolar disorder, and this is characterized by extreme periods of depression that alternate with episodes of highly elevated mood and intense activity referred to as mania. During manic episodes, people will typically experience a huge spike in energy, sleeplessness, delusions of grandeur, racing thoughts, and impulsivity. However, a common misconception about bipolar disorder is that individuals with this disorder frequently alternate between high and low mood, even multiple times per day or hour. The reality is that the depressive phases and manic phases last for extended periods of time, such that a patient may experience depression for months and then mania for a couple of weeks. Usually, an individual with bipolar disorder will experience depression more than mania and can go periods of time between cycles without experiencing experiencing any symptoms. Just like depression, there are both external and internal factors that increase the likelihood of experiencing bipolar disorder. External factors include the external environment during development, starting as early as the fetal stage. For example, fetuses exposed to large amounts of alcohol are put at increased risk for developing bipolar disorder later in life. In terms of internal factors, many have been identified, including a genetic component to bipolar disorder. In twin studies, results have shown that if one twin has bipolar disorder, there is a 40 to 70% chance that the other will also at some point in their life experience bipolar disorder. That concludes this tricky topic covering different types of mood and personality disorders and how they differ from one another.